Hello the folks and welcome back to episode 21 of our Ashes Cricket 2009 playthrough. If you didn't watch the first part of this ep well not this episode, but of this uh, test match part 20, make sure to go back in the playlist and watch that because we built up a lot of what we've done already. We were 92 for 1 at the end of the last episode, uh, 13 overs in, and now we are 96 for 1, 5 overs later. Simulated a little bit, they haven't picked up that many runs since then, but Andrew Strauss on 58 off 57. And Ian Bell on 31 or 46. And maybe today we can make it a 100 partnership. Now, I am recording this uh, before the end of the Ashes. So I will be talking about uh, the permutations for the Ashes in the next episode. Because obviously I don't know what's happened yet. That is a very good chance. I don't know, he's dropped that. Goodness me, I don't know what on earth happened there. But uh, excitement from the first ball. It's gone on there. He dropped it. Well... Ian Bell, no, it was Strauss, because of course they only got a single. But uh, yeah, Ian, uh, Strauss dropped at the first ball. But I'm recording this straight after the last episode, so as I've just said, but again, we're, we've brought up the 100. We are batting very well at the moment. But uh, yeah, Andrew Strauss brought up his 50 last episode. Ian Bell going towards that into the 30s now with a very solid shot there. And I am recording this just after I record the last episode, so on Saturday evening, so the test match will be over. When will it be over now? Thursday for... It will be over on Monday, won't it? So yeah, it'll be over by the time this comes out, basically, but... I would guess the Aussies will win. Uh, you just never know, do you, I suppose? You just never, never know. Good defensive shot, though, there. From Ian Bell. But I think we've got that good at batting on this game now, that to be honest, if we regulate ourselves, if we're not too stupid, then we can last all day. Something the Aussies clearly can't. The Aussies really struggling to last against us. They haven't got had an innings over, what, 150 since the end of that first test match, I'm fairly sure. They did. Get, I think they got 212, actually, in uh, the second innings of the second test match where we beat them by an innings. But still, again, that was what they got in one innings. Just not playing very well. Well, we deserve that. That's what we deserve. Because I said we needed to regulate ourselves. I said that. Come right from my mouth. Go back about 30 seconds. That's exactly what I said. Don't play anything stupid. The one shot that didn't come off very well. Ian Bell's gone. We didn't need that. That was stupid. And, uh, yeah, Alistair Cook comes in. So it is the opening partnership, really, that we're bringing in. If you didn't watch the last episode, I brought Cook back to number four. Um, because Michael Vaughan came in to replace Andrew Flintoff. Of course, Flint's off uh, out of this test in real life. So I've brought Cook down the order a little bit just to readjust himself. And Kevin Peterson fills in that number six spot that uh, Andrew Flintoff has left. So, new partnership here. Again, not really good enough. That wasn't for me and Bell. Uh, we should just regulate ourselves a little bit more. But if you play so many good shots, you, you seem to think that you're never going to play a bad shot ultimately. And when you do and get away with it, you, you, you don't really bother. But uh, this time, we haven't got away with it, and uh, he's out. But Cook will be off the mark here with a single. Two fumbles there, overthrows, and the bloke who he overthrew to, we didn't make a very good attempt at that either. But Cook on a single. Strauss on for a good score. That's a top edge. I haven't played one of them for a long while. Hmm, this is interesting. I am very, very interesting. Of course, we've got the chance to win the Ashes in this match. Which would be a great opportunity. Not the best shot there. Not the best shot there. Oh. I'll tell you what. Poor Alistair Cook. He's really been caught in the, the line, hasn't he? He's really been caught in the fire. The line of fire. That's the... Is that it? Yeah, sure it is. Uh, but yeah, he's really been caught because when we... Well, when we bat with Strauss, it seems that... Cook gets run, run out awfully often. And again, it really nearly happened there. So we'll just leave this one. No point playing. This is not going to swing back in that much. At the end of 20 overs, we have now lost a man. That's Ian Bell. Uh, Cook off the mark, 1 off 4. And Strauss 60 off 60. So 100% strike rate. Decent innings from Bell. Didn't really get started that much. But we can't get too grumpy. As long as we have a decent innings, uh, 300, 350 probably to start us off here. Uh, then if we can bowl Australia out for 2, 2.50, then we'll have a nice innings going into the next, uh, a nice lead going into the next innings. But Australia, 
really are due a score because they've been batting pretty awfully, I think it's fair to say. We've been bowling well. Sure, we have. That's uh, a comment to make, but Australia have uh, really been batting poorly. I.e. in the last match they got, I think it was 150, and two of the batsmen got 106 of them. So that just shows how much of a, a team they've been. It's been a real, it was a two-man performance. The rest of them did bugger all, basically. We've been a little bit like that, I think it's fair to say, in some test matches. But we are 2-1 up now. So we've got the advance. We definitely have the advance in terms of bowling now. Just about cementing that batting, getting a good innings on the board. And uh, really putting the pressure on Australia. So if we can, I'd love to bat out all of today. Bat out all of today, get a good score. This is abnormal because uh, Mitchell Johnson bowled so poorly earlier on. I think let us have sort of something like 30 runs off three overs, which has really uh, made the score look a lot better than it is in terms of us whacking it about. But if you think about it, without those three overs, it'd be 70-odd off 20 overs, which would be only sort of three and a half an over. So that would be a normal... Uh, test innings. That's why it looks a little bit inflated, but uh, we are defending a little bit more now, and uh, I don't think any runs from that over. It was 60 from 60, wasn't it, for Strauss? So uh, a maiden over, that'll suit us, and Mitchell Johnson is back in. Well, let's see if his stint is anything like before. That's a lot fuller, and I don't blame him for trying to get Cook out. He's not been batting very well in this uh, test series, but the highest score he's had is 15 or 20. So moving him back, again, not so much pressure on him now. He's got a partner who scored a lot of runs, and uh, we'll just have to see how he goes. It'd be great if we had a good partnership between these two, and maybe this might be a good place for Belt uh, for Bell um, for Alistair Cook to go in this uh, in this team for the last test. We can wriggle things about if we win the Ashes. It don't really matter what we do because we won't be continuing with this squad after this. Uh, so it's not like a case of bringing through youngsters or anything, or like real life. A decent attacking shot there. Go for two. Alistair Cook nicely off the mark. He did get a single before. But uh, that'll be a good two runs. Just hesitate to attack a bit because I think the resp responsibility is on us now. We've, unless it's a good ball. Uh, as in a good batting ball. So a poor bowling ball. Uh, unless it's a good ball to just defend some of these out. Good defensive shot there. I've recorded three videos today. I think my... Throat's going to hurt quite a bit after this. It's amazing, really, if you talk for two hours, how uh, it uh, does hurt your throat. But that's a great shot from Cook. I like, though, just going towards the leg side. Move the batsman a little bit, and it gives you a lot of freedom to play the shot. And uh, we'll take the four there. I think he's playing with the most freedom. He's played with uh, all series, which is great. But that's very wide of off stump. That's not going to swing back in, so I think it's fair to say... We are safe to just leave that one. And after 22 overs, it is 115 for two. And uh, Cook nicely off the mark. Seven off 11. And uh, Andrew Strauss, 60 off 67. So still going the fast men. Uh, no spinners or anything. Which is interesting. But who have they got? That's a good point, actually. Who have they got? Nathan Horwitz is out of the squad. Uh, I know Marcus North is a bit of a stint at spin bowling. But nothing fantastic. So that is a, that is a good point. Nathan Horwich was their big spin bowler. He was out for Stuart Clark. Don't know why, but I've just followed what their squad was in real life. So, yeah, it just seems to be all fast bowlers. Hilf and House, Clark, Siddle and uh, Mitchell Johnson. And maybe Marcus North as a uh, occasional spinner. He'll prove me wrong now. Marcus North will bowl the next 20 overs, you can guarantee it. Well, these are all pretty good balls. Strauss, again, in a... Good position here, so we don't want to ruin that. Plus the fact, I think that if we lose a third wicket here, it, it's still fairly early on in the innings. We don't want to exploit Alistair Cook, particularly uh, Cook and Collingwood. Two good batsmen, but quite cautious in their uh, in their craft. So I don't want to put them two under pressure massively. Uh, so just defend some of these and, and wait for the opportunities to come now. But we've batted for quite a while, so after this episode we will probably simulate quite a fair bit. Depending on what the situation is, really. Uh, we'll, we'll gauge that at the end of the episode. We will probably simulate quite a bit and say the tail enders. If not, uh, if we, well, we could well have a collapse in this innings, of course. We could have a collapse now. Is he caught? Well, I can't believe that. The first attacking shot we played to the leg side. Pete Siddle so close to the batsman, it's painful. 
And what a catch that is. Reflexes are unbelievable. And, uh, well, Andrew Stripes has gone. That's a shock. Real shock. He's gone for 60. I wasn't expecting that. We defended out all that over. Just fancied an attacking shot on the leg side. And an awesome catch from Paige Siddle. Unbelievable. I mean, two minds now. No, we're going to have to bring Collingwood in. I was thinking bring side bottom in, but that's just a stupid suggestion. But we really didn't need this. Again, we're kind of back to square one. 116 frees. Not that much of an impressive score. First three batsmen gone. Ben Hilfenhaus, it's important to comment, has took all of those wickets. So he's on for a five for potentially here. But Cook is exposed. I did say I didn't want to expose him. But he has definitely been exposed here. Which I'm not too pleased about. But you just have to play a few aggressive shots sometimes. A little bit of a shorter ball. I thought we might as well try and get a run or two. Albeit it went wrong and it's uh, Cook and Collingwood that are at the crease. Now it's their responsibility. They're perfectly good. They've got perfectly good CVs. And uh, they should get a decent partnership. If they don't, then we have got a bit of a worry on our hands. Because Peterson could be out very quickly. Outside edge thought That might have just worked playing it to, to that side. But just let these two settle a little bit now. Again, we had a good partnership for that second wicket. For the third wicket, the partnership wasn't so good. Purely because Strauss played that one shot. And to be fair, he composed himself a lot. No but 60, it's added to the score. It's better than Australia have been getting. So, I mean, at the moment, it's an average of, what, 40 per, per wicket, if you like, in terms of the partnerships. So if we can keep it like that, that would be a very cushy score. Of course, if we lose these two, then we've got a real problem. That's wide of off stump there, but it could curve back in, so I'm just going to defend that one. And nicely defended by Alistair Cook. Mitchell Johnson certainly marked bowling a lot better than his first stint. Goodness me. It was dreadful for you guys that had watched it. But again, this a lot wider than that of off stump. Might as well just try and defend it. You never know if it'll swing back in. He could play a crafty ball and we could be out. And we don't want to lose a wicket at this point, so... Collingwood will face his first ball. It's Ben Health and House. He's took all the wickets so far. Mm, interesting. A lot of space. Either side. And a great start from uh, from Collingwood. First ball. That should be a boundary. I thought there was a lot of side, a lot of uh, room that leg side. If you just move over, that's our natural shot. Really, we love those shots. Just uh, come a little bit closer to the uh, offside. A little bit more room to manoeuvre, and a nice shot to the leg side for four. Not a bad way to start your innings, eh? This coming wide of off stump there. So we'll just defend it. Again, at this point, I don't really want to be leaving balls unless they're way, way wide. There's not that much chance of us edging anything, so we're okay in terms of that. But you just never know if it was an in-swinger. There's not been many played so far, but it's all right saying there haven't been many played. If there's one played and you miss, well, you could be out. And we don't want that. We don't want to lose a fourth wicket at this point. That would be pretty costly, I think. Leave. I think it's unfair to call these guys tail-enders. The likes of Peterson. I mean, Peterson's not a tail-ender, certainly. But prior, broad, etc. It would be harsh to leave them a big task. And really rely on side bottom. He's kind of the 2009 version of Jack Leach. Batting really well. His bowling's not been the forefront. That's what Jack Leach and Ryan Sidebottom were both brought into the squad for. But their uh, batting has been a real treat, especially side bottom. But you've got to look Jack Leach. I mean, Peterson said in the press, hasn't he? I don't really get this, that uh, apparently Leach has become a laughing stock. I didn't read the whole article, which probably is a mistake, but that was the headline. I did think that's a bit ridiculous. Well, very attacking from uh, Stuart Clark here. If you play a shot like that, you get plenty of runs. It's a risky one, but you might as well play it first uh, shot of the over. We can get free out of this. It's going to be tight. It is going to be tight. A little bit stupid, perhaps, there. But the wrong end. Wrong end it's gone to. Really, Cook picks up four. Uh, three, sorry, not four. And uh, it's Collingwood back on strike. Now, we were a victim of that. Uh, I think it's short leg, isn't it? Short leg being there. That's hit the batsman, but it's not going to curve in. That's a ridiculous appeal. But yeah, he was there at short leg. Uh, and, of course, that's how Strauss got out. Well, you saw it. I don't need to describe it to you. That's a very good defensive shot from Collingwood. Could have even got a single there. Not worth it, though. Interesting, it's Hilfenhaus who's got all the wickets so far. 
I mean, Clark, Johnson, apart from that little stint, and Siddle have bowled well. Has Siddle bowled yet? Let's have a quick look. I don't think Siddle's had a bowl yet. No, it's been Johnson, Hilf and House and Clark. Funnily enough, Hilf and House is... Uh, Economy is pretty close to Johnson, which just shows how Johnson has really loosened up in the last few overs. He conceded 33 runs off his first three overs, and he's 16 then off the next six. Of course, you can see a massive difference. That's half the runs in double the overs, which is crucial. But already nearly eight overs done for today. And I think in a bit of a different move, why not? We're going to... Spice things up a little bit in this episode because I'm sure you don't want to see continuous batting all the time We are going to simulate to the 35th over. We're going to simulate nine overs Let these two do a bit see how they get on. Uh, I'll be back with you then Well, the good news is we haven't lost a wicket. We've just come out after lunch uh, 27 off 49 for Cook and 16 off 35 for Collingwood a solid start for them and uh, We've had Marcus North introduce the attack. He's bowled four overs for 17 and uh, the good news is it's not been a wicket So we're gonna come straight back into the action uh, probably do another five overs. I thought I'd just shake it up a bit because we were defending quite a bit. And again, these two just need to build up the scores. We've just seen plenty of so far. So we're going to do another five overs here uh, and see how we get on. Hopefully not lose a wicket. But uh, we're looking in a very strong position, particularly at lunch at about 140 for free. A very strong position. Again, sad that we've lost the first three batsmen. You can't do much about that. But there's plenty of batsmen here. This really goes deep. Proven that, you know, even Side Bottom and Anderson and Swan can uh, produce the goods if fast. Can't rely on those batsmen, of course, but they can do a job. They can get some runs for you. And just make the Australian job harder. Again, for the second match in a row, they're putting us a bat first. But really, there's, it's it's lose-lose uh, for Australia. If they come in and bat and they're out for 90-odd be lunch, that's terrible for them. It's really the match gone unless we go out for the similar amount. Uh, but if we come out to bat first, then it looks like we're going to get a good score. So it looks pretty daunting for them to chase. It's a good shot, though. Fielder tried to get that short. Just go for the single there. No point getting stupid. Just go for the single. They've protected the partnership for nine overs. Why should I go and destroy it so quickly? But nobody on the boundary in that. That's interesting. A lot of fielders coming short. Good defensive shot there from Alistair Cook to end the over. And it is Collingwood. I mean, that's not intentional against Cook. Uh, but yeah, Collingwood's going to face the next over. And it is spin. As I said, Marcus Norford coming. I was saying about spin earlier. And after lunch, they're going to try and get this fourth wicket for the use of spin. I don't like batting against spin. Especially in these precarious positions. When you're having a whack, it's great. Because you can get sixes all over the place. But this this time in an innings really is not the time to be having a whack. Seven, eight wickets down, yes. No but this is a partnership we need to protect. Could really alter how many runs we get in this first innings. So we'll just defend a few balls. Get used to the spin bowling dynamic. Remember that we've been batting over after over to, uh, to fast bowlers. It's a very different style of... Of bowling, of course. A lot slower for one thing. That's the obvious choice. But, again, you have to try to play things at different times. So, we might try the odd attacking shot. We'll have to see how we go. It's not the best shot, but we get away with it. Not going to go for any runs. This will probably be made an over, but just an experimentation over. You've probably seen that... Uh, we are becoming a little bit more defensive now, which it's just a tactic really to to make things a little bit more realistic, yes. Um, but not to lose wickets. We've had no ball there, so it's not going to quite be a maiden. We can't be losing wickets at this point, realistically. This is a crucial time in the innings. We can win the Ashes this uh, in this test match, so I want to try and respect that and play as best we can, uh, both in terms of the cricket, but tactically as well, making sure that there's a good balance uh, and that we start the first innings well, because as we saw in the first match... We lost the match in the first innings, really. We don't want to do that again. Oh, top edge. Well, 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 well. The E, uh, I said, we wants to protect these partnership. But Alistair Cook gone. It is a personal best, I think, for this uh, for this series. But albeit a top edge from Alistair Cook. Uh, just hits the top of the bat. And a fairly easy catch in the slips of Simon Katic. 
So, uh, Cookie's gone. 156 for four. Not the best start for us all of a sudden. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's not been great. Runs are fine. We've got a decent innings going, but, again, the partnerships haven't been brilliant. And another wicket that's disappointing through just playing a defensive shot. But just a top edge, mistimed, it can happen. And we've been caught in slips. <sighs> Ooh. We just want to make sure that Australia don't supply, start playing the psychological game on us and that get the hub hand. We don't want that to happen at all. But quite an interesting dynamic really from this innings now because it's the sort of innings that it could collapse and we could be all out for 200. Or these two could get a really good partnership going and we could be talking 400, 450. Because these two are still still very capable and a good shot to start Peterson off. Just the single to get him started off the mark and Colin Woodham face the last ball of this over. And then a bit, a bit of spin. So spin to spin. Of course Peterson likes a bit of spin. He does a bit, a bit, bit of spin bowling himself. So quite a few wickets in this series so far. Graham Swan's not been producing the goods but uh, Peterson has another nice shot there from uh, Colin Wood. So it will be. Uh, Collingwood facing the spin, not Peterson. But you might as well take runs where you can get it. No preferential tweet. Tw tweetment? It's not Twitter. Uh, no, pre pre yeah, no preferential tweet. Uh, God, I've said it again. No preferential treatment to either of these players. It's going to be Collingwood facing for this penult uh, penultimate over of today's episode. But as I did say at the start, uh, on Friday I will talk through the Ashes in a little bit more detail. I'm recording this just after uh, my last episode on Saturday. So that's a no-ball. That's a good uh, good run for us to get there. But the real-life cricket, there's nothing to say really at the moment. And the fact it'd be massively outdated. On day two of the, the test match, or day three, whatever it is now. It's a nice shot from Collingwood. Bit of reverse swing going on there. Oh, that's going to be close. That's close. That might be a bit of a risk to take there. Third umpire, and this could be closer than you might think. I think we get away with it, though. Just because Collingwood dived there. Again, could have gone for the single. We were a little bit greedy, went for the two. And I think we'll get away with it, but very good field in there to get it back. No, not interested, so a good two there. Collingwood into the 20s. Pitts on a single. Another good defensive shot there. I've really enjoyed this Ashes series though, really have. It's been great having a bat and a bowl. At the start of the series I thought, oh, we're going to do a lot more batting than we are bowling because the bowling's boring, but our bowling technique seems to be really good. We're getting the wickets nice and quickly and it's enjoyable. In that first test match, we were just bowling too much to the wickets. Seems to be bowling a little bit outside the off stump and the leg stump, etc. That uh, the batsman chants it a little bit more and then before you get your wickets. But with Thailanders, if you bowl straight at the stumps, then of course they're not going to last the time. So it's a fascinating tactical battle of what you do. Had to change that pretty late because I thought it was going to come to the leg side. But we adapted nicely. A good four there. Bit of reverse swing. It's not reverse swing, is it actually? No, it's not reverse swing. That's wrong. Because it was a reverse swing, we'd kind of be bringing the bat round. It's kind of tricky to explain in words. I'm more of a visual person, but... Uh, yeah, it's not reverse swing, just a slog to the leg side. But uh, good four there, 24 off 55. A good conservative start for Paul Collingwood. And it's going to be Kevin Peterson facing the last over from Mitchell Johnson. How can you not exploit that uh, leg side space? Goodness me, but not a good start from Peterson. I know it's a ploy, this leg side space, but I think we can beat the Aussies in that department personally. Nice. Easy. Don't know why they've got nobody out there. No risk unless you play uh, and have a and have a, and have an edge to the slips because there's plenty of room out there as you can see. So we're going to exploit it. This over. And if there's anybody that can have a slog, it's Peterson. And again, we might as well pick up the runs where we can. And also we need a good partnership, but a partnership means runs, and we can get some nice runs here. Again, two fours in a row for Peterson. Bit of a shorter ball here. Bit of a poorer shot, but doesn't matter. It will go only for... Oh, maybe the single. Maybe only the single. Calm down. Yeah, a bit of a poorer shot, but there's plenty of room out there. It can sit in the air for half an hour when they wouldn't catch it up. Of course, a little bit of an exaggeration, but oh well. 
Great shot from Collingwood. Not quite a full toss, but it was a Yorker. And we've got a little bit more aggressive in this last over. And uh, just before the 40, 41st over, uh, we will have the final ball. And then I'll come back to you on Friday with the end of this first innings. No ball, outside edge, so another run for us there. But we're just going to defend this one out, and a very good, uh, well, really bolstered by this final over. Mitchell Johnson's uh, run rate's going to go back up quite sharpish, but uh, good from us. So, at the end of 40 overs, it is 179 for four. Not the best start for us, because we lost a few key men, uh, but Collingwood and Peterson should get a good partnership now. But if you enjoyed that, actually, leave a like down below, comment down below as well, and do subscribe for more cricket content. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Until the next time, see you guys later. Goodbye for now.